What's up, nerds, and welcome to the Nerd History Podcast, the newest addition to the Love Thy Nerd Podcast Network. The Nerd History Podcast exists to do what all nerds love the most, talk about the history of their favorite fandoms until everyone within earshot suddenly develops narcolepsy. Each episode, <laughs> we'll spotlight one particular nerd history event from that week and take a deep dive into the fandom, the lore, the nerdy facts. I'm Radio Matt, the Director of Content and Resources for Love Thy Nerd, and the Station Manager for LTN Radio, and with me today and forevermore is my beautiful bride, Daedra. Hi, I'm Daedra. We are your nerd historians, and today on the show, we're taking a look at the history of LEGO Masters, which celebrates its fourth anniversary this week, at least in America. What? Let's take a quick look at Facebook <laughs> and uh, at Facebook. I didn't change that line from last week. I'm sorry. Let's take a quick look at Lego, Lego Masters, Masters and give our initial thoughts. <laughs> on February 5th, 2020, Lego Masters premiered on Fox. Lego Masters is a reality competition series where teams of two Lego enthusiasts build elaborate original projects with Lego bricks and compete for a cash prize, the Lego trophy, and the title of Lego Master. So uh, you and I have seen the first two seasons. We've just started the third. Uh-huh. Uh, but there are four seasons in total uh-huh. and two mini Christmas seasons. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I think they're each four episodes long. Okay. So That's I'm excited cool. for those. Yeah. Um, but this hit like a month before the pandemic did. Really? Like it launched February 2020. Gosh, yeah. Pandemic started rolling okay. out around March. Uh-huh. Don't remind me. It was like the first. Four years? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like yesterday, doesn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was kind of the first like bingeable thing. As the pandemic started setting in and people started being more and more at home. Probably and, us too. Yeah. I think we watched it real quick, didn't we? Or were it, we watching We were already it? watching it, but like we were continuing to watch it. <laughs> uh, and I'm pretty sure by the time the second season rolled out, we were still under most restrictions. So yeah, we were feeling it. Uh, it did inspire a lot of people to use Lego mm-hmm. to pass the time. During the heavy lockdowns. Yeah, Yeah. a lot of people did that. A lot of people tackled the really big builds. I'm Mm -hmm. pretty sure that giant Millennium Falcon came out around that same time, too. A lot of people bought, ponied up the dough for that one. The, I don't know, $400 or however much that one cost. Ridiculous amount of money. Yeah. And then Dude Perfect destroyed one in one of their videos. (laughs) Those people. Just flaunt that you can just do that. Okay. What were your first impressions of the show when we first started watching it? Um, so you probably introduced it to me, right? Because you always know all the shows going on. I always know all the shows. Uh-huh. And so I was probably like, oh, that would be cool. Mm-hmm. And then, oh my gosh, I was in love from the first episode. So good. So well done. So Very good. fun idea. We kind of talked about it the other night. It's like, it's weird that... It's really just a giant ad for Lego. <laughs> There's no getting around that this is an advertisement for Lego products. <laughs> but it is so well done. Yeah. That it is hard to care. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> hard to care about that. Um, how perfect is the host choice in Will Arnett? Uh, yeah. I you gotta might... say, I'm, I'm starting to get like a celebrity crush here. Oh, a little bit. Me too, honestly. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I kiss him on the mouth. Uh, <laughs> now he's he's so personable, yeah. and the faux, um, like the fake ego, yes. the fake ego that uh-huh. he has, uh-huh. doesn't seem to get old. At least with me, I don't know. I can't tell <laughs> if everybody either. feels yeah. that way, but I love it. He's my favorite reality show host. Yeah. Pretty much ever yeah. at this point. I I really love um, two things. One, on that first season, <laughs> that couple <clears throat> that um, was fighting all the time, and the guy that was like, I feel like you just don't get Lego. Right. That guy. <laughs> I remember they were like bickering, and he uh-huh. goes up to them and like calms them down. Like, mm-hmm. and tells them okay we're just redo we're hitting the redo button and 
they're like, okay, and they calm down. And he's like, I do that with my kids all the time. And I'm like, is that an insult to them? I don't know. <laughs> uh, big question, babe. Oh, I didn't see I'm sorry, you're not second done? Thing. I'm sorry, I forgot. I second two thing. things. Second I apologize. Thing. Second thing. Every time there's a celebrity that comes on, they like take over the show and he like gets all... Um, Jealous, self-conscious yeah, and self-conscious, jealous of yeah. the the, the <laughs> guest, and that's always enjoyable. It is very fun. So the big question, uh huh, you and I go on Lego Masters. How long are we lasting? We're not even gonna make it, Lego <laughs> Masters. What are you talking about? I'm sure there's a tryout session, look, and we're gonna fail that. Look, the last episode we watched had one of the worst builds we've ever seen. That's true. I am positive. <laughs> positive in this season we would have made it longer than them here's what i am sure of though hmm. if it was like us versus our son eli he would get to go on like a master True. and we would not True. he's pretty good he's pretty creative i had a lot of legos when i was a kid um but the thing is is legos have evolved yeah. and when we were kids playing with legos they were a little brick you know, different sizes of bricks. There's so much now in that technic other thing. I didn't stuff have they have and but I had a lot of oh my specialized gosh. I was just parts. sorting the boys' Legos recently when I organized their room and I was going, They have so many different kinds of Legos now. It's like ridiculous. You can't you can't organize it besides by color. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> makes makes <laughs> Makes sense. There are too many different shapes yeah, for you yeah. to be able to organize. And so them. Yeah. I'm sure they have all of those available to them, right? The way the brick pit seems to be set up, it is it's mostly by color. But I think they have some specialty pieces in the drawers. Okay. But it looks like Hard for the most they part. They don't show a lot of them digging searching into it, yeah. digging for the bricks. Yeah. That would be pretty boring. I feel like. But I want to know how it works. <laughs> I want to see behind the scenes. How do these people know where to get their bricks? <laughs> well, we are going to take a deeper dive into the history of Lego Masters in a bit, but now it is time for a game. Yay! Each week we go head to head in a game to put our nerdy nostalgia, nostal, dang it, <laughs> nerdy nostalgia knowledge to the test. We will ask each other five questions, all multiple choice. If we get the wrong answer, we have to guess again. With each wrong answer, earning us an X. Fewest X's at the round wins. The end of the How round. many have I won? How many games have I won so far, Matthew? None games, but you did tie one game. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, since the next Sunday is the Super Bowl, we're going to take a stab at some football trivia. Can't wait. Look. <laughs> look. If there's ever been a time no. for random chance... No, if it was like Anne of Green Gables trivia. <laughs> no, because okay. stuff you know. This, know. this is both is of us great. coming in with barely any knowledge at all mm -hmm. of football. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to people, which I'm sure it's going to ask a lot of questions about people. I don't know anything about Me it. Me neither. You're going to know the names at least. I know two people that play football currently. <laughs> well, I know one. So there. <laughs> we know one of the same. <laughs> Let's uh, flip a coin. Heads or tails? Uh, let's go with tails. Heads. All right. I answer first. You go first. Let's go. What the? He well, that doesn't help. Add removed. All right. Fresh. There we go. Who was the first player drafted in the first NFL draft in 1936? Don Hudson. Jay Burwagger. Bart Starr, Sammy Bo, Bow, Bo, Bow. I think that's Jay Burwanger. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Well, I wasn't going to pronounce it like that. <laughs> Bart Starr. Like Bart Starr sounds fun, so I'm going to say Bart Starr. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Burwanger. Yay! Ah. Jay Burwanger was the top selection in the first ever NFL draft. Originally drafted by Philadelphia, his rights were sold to Bears coach George Hallis. But his asking price of $25,000 for two seasons was too high. That is so low compared mm -hmm. to today. 
-hmm. and he never signed a contract instead taking a job as a foam rubber salesman and he died of lung cancer in 2002 that is the saddest very bummer fact i've ever heard in my life this is turning out great all right in 1993 what nfl team made off-season trades for Joe Montana and Marcus Allen. I recognized one of those names. Kansas City Chiefs, San Francisco 49ers, Denver Broncos, Oakland Raiders. I don't know who Joe Montana played for. Made an off season. Broncos? No. Niners? Ah. You're showing that you don't know anything. Chiefs. About Kansas City Chiefs traded for Joe Montana and Marcus Allen in 1993. They'd go on to post a record 11-5 that year, just missing the Super Bowl when they lost to the Buffalo Bills in the AFC Championship game. <sighs> Don't Sorry, yell. I love football. Uh, <laughs> what team was originally named the New York Titans? Tennessee Titans, New York Giants, Kansas City Chiefs, New York Jets. Okay, well, one of those has Titans in it. Is that a misdirection? Crap. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what they're asking. If they're asking if this specific New York team had a different name or if this team moved to a different city, which is also a thing that I know happens. Oh. <sighs> New York Titans. Oh, so they were the New York Titans and they moved to Tennessee and now they're the Tennessee Titans? I don't think that's what happened. If I'm remembering... Cheating? No. Sorry. <laughs> My phone's locking up. I think that the Tennessee Titans used to be the Houston Oilers. Sure. I only know that because of Rugrats. <laughs> So I'm going to say that that's a misdirection. So maybe it's just a New York team. I'm going to say New York Giants. Where's my mouse? There it is. Dang it. New York Jets. Yay! New York's original AFL team was called the Titans when Sonny Werblin <laughs> took over the franchise in 1963, changed the name to the New York Jets to reflect the modern approach to his team and the star set of performances he hoped his team would produce. Okay, okay. I'm not doing too bad. I got four X's yeah. so far. I'm going to get way more than that. Uh, what team won three Super Bowls in the 1990s? This one I do know. Broncos, Cowboys, Patriots, 49ers. Cowboys. Yeah, I wouldn't have even known. Dallas that. Cowboys were the only team in the 90s to win three Super Bowls, claiming wow. Super Bowl 30, nope, 27, <laughs> 28, and 30. <laughs> the Denver Broncos and San Francisco 49ers each won two Super Bowls in the 90s. Okay, okay, okay. Last one. Who was the first player to rush for a 1,000 yards in a season? Do you know what that means? Sure. Okay. Jim Brown. Betty. Beatty. Beatty. Beatty Feathers. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Who named you? Steve Van... Buren? Buren? Buren. It's Buren. And Joe Perry. BDF. I think rushing is when instead of the ball being passed, you like run it. Okay, that's I think. Uh -huh. I think. To rush for a thousand yards in the season. But here's here's where the problem lies. I recognize none of these names. Okay. Uh huh. Joe Perry. Nope. Come on, pick him. Beanie Feathers. <laughs> <laughs> of the Chicago Bears, rushed for 1,004 yards in 1934. Remarkably, he did it only 119 carries. Okay, good job. Giving him an amazing 8.4 yards per carry average. Good job, Beanie. Good job. So that's one, two, three, four, five. That's much better than I expected to do. I get credit for that last one. I made you pick him. Oh, well, you don't get credit. I do. You helped me. I get me. a credit. That's your... One credit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your turn. Which NFL team features a helmet logo only on one side of their helmet? The Cowboys, the Dolphins, the Steelers, or the Patriots? The Dolphins. The Patriots. <laughs> 
Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> the Pittsburgh Steelers are the only NFL team to display their logo only on one side of the helmet in 1962. The team was not sure how their new logo would look on the then solid gold helmet, so they decided to test out the logo on just one side of the helmet. The attention that decision attained, as well as the record-setting 9-5 season, made the logo's placement permanent, even after the team switched to solid black helmets. Wow. Yeah. It's a statement. What ride? Why? Blah, blah, blah. What wide receiver <laughs> caused a sensation his rookie season with a one-handed catch? Odell Beckham Jr., Randy Moss, Jerry Rice, Antonio Brown. I recognize all those names. I recognize none of those names. Wow. Antonio Brown. Is that who you're guessing? Uh huh. Randy Moss. Odell Beckham Jr. Yay! During week 12 of his rookie season, Odell Beckham came to national attention when he made a one-handed touchdown catch while falling backwards in a Sunday night football game against the Dallas Cowboys. Numerous pundits oh. called it the greatest catch ever made, and Beckham went on to win the 2014 Offensive Rookie of the Year Award. How cool. That's five right there. <clears throat> so, so I have to get... You can sweep these last three and tie me. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Who holds the best rookie passer rating in NFL history? Dan Marino, Robert Griffith III, Dak Prescott, or Tom Brady? Okay, I recognize two of those names. Okay. I'm going to go with Dan Marino. <laughs> Tom Brady. <laughs> well, those are the two you recognize, right? Robert Griffith. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Dak Prescott finished his rookie season with a passer rating of 104.9, breaking the previous record of 102.4 set by Robert Griffith III in 2012. Oh, so he broke the other guy. So this is recent, okay. yeah. Okay. <sighs> what is the oldest NFL franchise in continuous operation with the same name in the same location? Oh. The Green Bay Packers, the Chicago Bears, the Cleveland Browns, or the Arizona Cardinals? Green Bay Packers. I think that's right. Hey. Yeah. Green Bay Packers were founded in 1919 and joined the NFL in 1921. Cool. That's crazy. What Motown singer tried out for the Detroit Lions in 1970? Was it Smokey Robinson, <laughs> Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, or Lionel Richie? Stevie Wonder Blind. <laughs> Smokey Robinson? I don't, even know. I don't know. No. I don't even know if these people were all living at 1970. I think they were. Lionel Richie? Marvin Gaye? Okay. I got real concerned. <laughs> Marvin Gaye bulked up nearly 30 pounds and trained uh, with the future Hall of Fame tight end Charlie Sanders while preparing for his tryout. He didn't make the cut, but remained close to several players who sang background vocals on his 1971 hit, What's Going On? <laughs> I'm Casey Kasem. Uh, one, two. Do we need to count? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm-hmm. Ten, Deidre. I had to double it. Is you that the like, most you've so got? Bad. I think that's I think the I've most you've got. <laughs> I think you got nine. It might have been eleven. I don't remember. It was a lot. So much. It's not good, Deidre. So, what team are you rooting for in the Super Bowl? Because whatever you're rooting for, I'm rooting against. Oh, because I'm such bad luck. Mm -hmm. Clearly. Uh, I I don't feel like I should declare a team on here. It might. Throw the game or something because do you not know? Fans. Do you not know who's playing? I <laughs> know who's playing. One of one of them. One of <laughs> the our our kids team, the Chiefs. The Chiefs. What's the other Dang one? Dang it! Remember? I knew it the other day. <laughs> Is it the forty? No. It's the forty nine. The yeah. Oh. There you go. Good job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that does it for our game. Let's take a trip. Back to 2020. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we dive into the history of Lego Masters, let's share a few more nerdy facts. Okay. Deidre. The contestants always have the bricks they need, thanks to a dedicated brick sorter who works behind the scenes to organize and replenish the brick pit. Mm -hmm. Cool. It's also ridiculous how long they spend building these things. We'll talk about it. Keep going. Okay. 
The show has a consulting producer named Nathan Sawaya. Sure. <laughs> Sawaya. Sawaya. Sorry, Nathan. <laughs> Nate who is a Lego master builder and an artist. He and his team are responsible for building anything that is not made by the contestants, such as the Lego trophy and the Lego wall. And I bet all those special All those things. special things, yeah. like we saw the Jurassic Park dinosaur eggs and things like that. Yeah, they've done so many. Yeah. Well, that whole Jurassic the Park whole The whole logo. logo, that's right. Yeah. They did that too. Mm -hmm. They've done like a whole scene. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the show has a psychiatrist on set to talk to the contestants after they are eliminated, as well as a massage therapist to help them relax after long hours of building. That is awesome. <laughs> okay, I changed my mind. We can totally make it <laughs> to Lego Master. Let's like, I'm, do it. I'm going to go out on a whim and say, if there was ever a reality competition I want to be on, this has to be the top. Right. Just from what I've learned about it. So we're going to go into some uh, some deep dive facts here. Okay. So like most of the best shows, it didn't start in America. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we just made it better. Zing! Uh -huh. uh -uh. Started on Channel 4 in the UK in 2017. Wow. Okay. So it was a British show first. Now we got to look that up. Launched in 2019 in Australia, which is... Uh, from what I can tell, the second most popular version after the American version. Okay. Uh, 2020, United States and Germany launched. Okay. Uh, I don't have the exact dates for the rest, but they've also launched in Sweden, Finland, Colombia, Norway, New Zealand, China, Denmark, France, Spain, and South Korea. Holy crap. This has been a very popular series. And it's all been within the last uh, Is it all we'll learn six it? years. It's not all we'll learn. <laughs> I looked at it and I watched a, like a clip of the UK one. And I don't know what season it's from. I know they did, uh, I think, three seasons. Uh -huh. But it's so drab compared to the <laughs> production value of the Will Arnett one with everything. The smoke and the, the raising yeah, I mean, Lego American. roofs and all this like, kind of stuff. This, this looks like <laughs> your local community Lego hangout. <laughs> Uh, they're just getting together playing with bricks. Uh, <laughs> funny. They, uh, so they really do have those massive amounts of time to build. Um, usually like the last one is a full 24 hours. Right. Okay. Right. The build is broken up. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's broken up Better. into usually two days. Um, each episode is about three days worth of shooting. And so... You'll usually build like the bulk of the time the first day, the rest of the time the second, maybe shoot some of the interviews the second day, and then do all of the judging and the explosions or whatever else, you know, that happens in the eliminations on the third day. And so wow. what, you know, what we see what in an hour like, yeah. Yeah, is at least three days worth of shooting, which... Then they'll usually have, I think, a day break before they film again. Okay. So that's like four days. So think about how long they're actually there for all those things. Yeah. It's a lot longer than it feels, especially when you've been Also, watching. like, it's got to be more <clears throat> stressful, right? You're building, and then they stop the time, and then you have to wait till the next day mm -hmm. before you get judged and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this also explains why celebrities, whenever they come on, never stay for the final build. Oh. They're there for the first shoot day, then they leave in the middle of the build somewhere, and that's because that's the end of the day. <laughs> They're going home. They only got. They have other things day. to do. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> uh, they do get lunch breaks, uh, and they can take other breaks to get like snacks, use the bathroom, or just for a breather. But the clock won't stop for those. Oh, wow. So okay. the clock only stops for lunch breaks and the shooting breaks. Wow. On set, their phones are locked away. So during breaks, there's no looking up reference material or build ideas. Uh, they won't even allow them to talk about their builds during lunch breaks or shooting breaks. Production is, uh, or like the producers are usually there. And if they start talking about it, they're like, don't talk about it. 
like <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like yeah it's like teachers to teachers in detention it. yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Uh, so production is most of the day. Some contestants say that they were so exhausted by the end of the day, the day that they didn't even have the energy to FaceTime their families. <laughs> uh, so on those occasions that families show up on the show, those reactions are very real, and it's been a really long time. Aww. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the show does a good job of making you feel like each show is one day. It does. Uh, and that the show could be done over the course uh, of a couple weeks, but... The, the full episode, like I said, actually takes three days to film. Uh, those interview bits that we see throughout the builds uh-huh. of them discussing them, those are all filmed after the fact. So producers take them through all the sections and processes and ask them questions, how did you feel during this time? Right. And so they have to, even if they know they lost, even if they knew the terrible things coming up, they have to act like they're in that moment. And only react like they're in that moment. If they which has got to be lot. hard. So they film. I don't know. I don't know what order and if it's always in the same order. But whatever foreknowledge they have. Right. Like on the occasion, which usually happens at least once uh, a season, where somebody's bill just falls apart right before the de- the, you know, the timer's up. You know they lost. But they have to. Talk about talk about each section how they and not be. like be all sad saying yeah we we didn't know what was we coming were up. Gonna do this. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, it you're was gonna, talk gonna like, look like this. Yeah, yeah. Um, none of the builds are kept unless the part of the prize is like being displayed, being somewhere. displayed somewhere, and that makes a lot of sense because most of them are destroyed somehow or somewhere because right. that's one of the fun things about the right the show, but. Uh, it is sad when the, you know they're not destroyed and they're really cool. Yeah. Each team has a dedi- has a dedicated set of D builders that oh, wow. takes apart each build and oh, replaces all those bricks gosh. back into the brick pit. <laughs> Can you imagine having that job? Oh. <laughs> Man, because I'm thinking of that first season. Yeah, it was my favorite season so far. I mean, I've only seen two, but they did some incredible stuff. Mm-hmm. Man, it looked. Awesome. It's very sad. Wow. Uh, speaking of the brick pit, every contestant loves it. Many say that in, in the early days, they have to force themselves not to just stare at it <laughs> right. and just be mes- mesmerized whenever they're supposed to be building. <laughs> um, like, we have a bunch of Legos for our kids. Uh-huh. And you have a couple times now, including very recently gone through we have this like split up box mm-hmm. and separated them all by color uh-huh. how does it feel when like you're done doing that do you feel zen am i done am i ever done <laughs> did, it, did it ever it get do, i i feel nice yeah and the weird thing is is when i do that for the boys they start to play with their legos again mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's got to be it's tempting. Overbearing for them to just have a big old pile of mixed Legos. Right. And when I separate them out, it's like, ooh. It's a draw. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It's like candy, man. Yeah. Yeah. It is very pretty. <laughs> so there are no real negatives to the show. Wow. And not just to the American version, but from what I can find information on any of the other bigger ones. Nothing. I don't know anything about the China one. I would assume the China one will probably have problems. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> they don't hear these podcasts. <laughs> uh, They're not allowed. The contestants really do get along pretty well. Uh-huh. Uh, there's very little drama, and when there is, they actually try to quash it as opposed to exploit it like most reality shows I do. I like that. Uh huh. They don't try and force any drama for TV. Anytime there is forced drama, it's always a joke. You know, right. It's always yeah. Will Arnett amping him up. Hey, go be the villain here in this section. Right. And it's really funny because they'll do it and then they'll be like, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I feel terrible now. <laughs> <laughs> like the, um, just the one we, the one we just watched, the Jurassic Park one from season two, mm-hmm. like in the, um, you know, the, the shoots that, the, the quick scenes they do at the end before commercial, like yeah, yeah, yeah. to show it. And it was the, um, the dinosaur, you know, attacking him, like, ah, you know, you didn't see that in any of the episode. <laughs> like, it was just, 
<laughs> it was just the catch to go to commercial. Yeah. Washing, I guess. Yeah. yeah it was um, funny. So I could only find one controversy, which was behind the scenes uh, on the Australian show where a producer was being a uh, a creep. Oh. A uh, sexual harassment kind of creep. All right. So, you know, that guy should be flogged. But other than that, the series in, in all the countries I can find is intended to be positive, fun, uplifting, and this seems to include behind the scenes as well. That's cool. So that's really cool. That's cool. I mean, they do have to spend <clears throat> forever with each other. Yes. Especially if they make it to the end. My yeah. goodness, that's yeah. a lot of time together. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the only real negative uh, is that it's difficult to find the show to stream from other countries to watch. Oh. Uh, Australia, which again is considered to be up there with the U.S. version, can be seen on 2 TV or shvideos.net. New Zealand you can also find on shvideos.net. Sweden is on YouTube. The original UK version is kind of split between 2B TV and YouTube. And then, of course, the US version is on Hulu. And some earlier seasons of it are also on 2B TV. But every other version, either Somewhere. it's only located in certain parts of the world, wow. or we have no idea. Hmm. Because okay. you got to live there, I guess. Everything's locked down hmm. um, to even know. So. It would take you some VPN shenanigans. I have a question. And some link in, hunting. In your research. Yeah. Did you find out if Will Arnett and the two judges. Amy and Jamie. Amy and Jamie. Are there for the whole time that the contestants are building? Yes. They are there a good portion of the time. Yeah. But they are not. Hovering over them all the time. Right. No. They have a more standard kind of shoot work day. They do the big opening. They come in occasionally. But I mean, and what you he see does, in the like show. like the surprise thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And they'll do that. Obviously, they're for the last hour of right. the build. Because they'll usually. The one hour left. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll go around and do those. How are things coming? Check-ins. Uh -huh. I'd say every few hours, because you'll notice on the you know, especially the long builds, the twenty-four hour builds or whatever. It's like you're jumping from you have know, twenty-four hours left to all right, ten hours left. How's it going over here, guys? You know that's, but it feels like it just happened, <laughs> right? You know, but for the most part, they're sitting there building uninterrupted. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why they always are really shocked whenever, like, oh, gosh, we have to stop. Something's happening, you know, anytime <laughs> Will speaks up. Because you watching the show, you feel like, yeah, of course. He says something every 10 minutes. <laughs> why are you so shocked? But, no, hours go by. That makes sense when, <laughs> when they have the celebrities come out, too. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been there working for mm -hmm. seven hours. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yep. So as a special note, this week uh, also sees the anniversaries of the Lego movie and the Lego Batman movie, both of which star Will Arnett as the voice of Batman. If hey. you're watching on the screen, we have a Batman we Funko Pop Batman. for us here in YouTube. <laughs> and I'm wearing a Batman shirt. Oh, that was oh unintentional. Wow. Uh, I think those are the two best Lego movies of the four. I agree. There's Ninjago, Ninjago Ninjago is okay. Ninjago. Okay. Ninjago? Ninjago. Ninjago. Thank you. Okay. It's okay. It's good. I laughed. The boys There's really some fun that parts. One. It circumvents your expectations in a few yeah. parts. I don't hate it. I feel like I like it more just because I liked the guy who voices the main character when he was on that Scrub After Scrub series. Oh, it is him, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It is. Um, <laughs> what's his name? Dave. Like the. Um. The um. I don't know. Dang it! I don't remember his why name. Act, now. Why act like I'm gonna know his name? It's Dave something. Dave. Yeah, it's the younger brother of the guy that played Harry in the Spider-Man movies. The really? Yeah. I could. I could. But see I don't that. remember the last name now. <laughs> I don't. Know. Anywho, that guy. Yeah, I like him. Also, like I don't know who voices 
the dad right? guy, right. but I like him. He's funny. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's a good movie, but it's not the best. Uh, and then <laughs> Lego Movie Part Two. I'm sorry to say that I I prefer the Ninja one over the Batman one. Really? I don't like the Batman. I one. love the Batman. It's one. too. It tries to be too dark. No, too. it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. It's an in, a huge joke. It trying to be dark. Uh, it it's does. not legitimately trying to be dark. It's trying to be dark for laughs. No. Dark, dark for laughs. It's a joke, Tadra. It's it's not as funny. You are such a noob. <laughs> Lego bat. Uh, no, sorry. Lego movie part two with the Duplos. Yeah. Was... Oh, that, that was weird. Mm-hmm. That really. That was weird. And how do you? <sighs> it's not the same. In the first one, you had the big reveal of it being, you know, in the real world, and mm-hmm. all this. it's not the same when you already know that going in, and they're tacking on a story. It's like the they have that sister, time travel thing, and, and yeah, and the weird. Time, I love time travel. <laughs> this didn't hit. This didn't hit for me. I don't like it. It was the same kind of time travel nonsense as in Lightyear. Which did you ever watch that? Maybe. Lightyear. It's it sounds familiar. Buzz the Buzz Lightyear. Oh, that. Okay. That. Wow. Did you ever see that? Yeah, we watched it. Did we watch it together? Uh huh. Oh, we had to. I thought I watched it myself. Watch it anyway. <laughs> you remember that time travel thing where it Zerg so turns weird. out to be him, an older version of him. Good gracious, I don't remember that. You don't remember that? Did you fall asleep during the movie? <laughs> <laughs> um really so like that's what this is. And look, I don't care if we're spoiling it for you. They're garbage movies. <laughs> don't watch them. Don't support them with your money. Uh, <laughs> but we love Lego. But we love Lego. And those first three movies are great. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> now that we've taken a look back at Lego Masters History, which wasn't very extensive because it's only been a few years. <laughs> This week, uh, we've reflected a bit on our childhoods, maybe even our adulthoods, and wanted to showcase some of our favorite Lego creations. So we asked the LTN Facebook group, Love Thy Nerd Community, what is your favorite Lego set that you've ever owned and why is it your favorite? Uh, But first, do you have any builds that you remember owning when you were Um, a kid? Does my own creation count? Sure. Why not? Okay. Because, you know, we were... We we weren't privy to getting the sets. I said I wanted Legos, and I got a bucket of Legos. A bucket of Legos. <laughs> <laughs> were they even really Legos, or were like the, the off? No, I mega so blocks or whatever. They were real Legos, and I got pink and like pastel purple, mm-hmm. pink white Legos, and my brother got the regular ugly colors. But anyway, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I. <laughs> Had a, uh, like in junior high, I still had the Lego, so and I had some set that I had to do, and I made a castle <sighs> out of my Legos. Did you ever? I think I remember uh, seeing that. I feel like because you kept it for a little I while, I kept it for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I was yeah. so proud of it, it was like the biggest thing I ever made for Lego. Yeah, it like had separate rooms and all that's like the only childhood memory that really stands out to me for Legos. <laughs> Is there any that we bought for either the boys that has stood out to you as like, this is really cool? Those Minecraft ones are cool because of the the movement. Yeah, they usually have like secret compartments or whatever. Stuff, yeah. yeah. And they can do a lot with the Minecraft because it's a square, they're a square. Right. It's, I really enjoy those. Um, I was going to say the Mario sets, but they're not really builds as much as they are like tracks you're making. The you're talking with the little yeah uh huh okay that probably made sense to nobody but well they get it <laughs> they're on board <laughs> yeah I think if we got that Bowser castle that Bowser castle looked pretty dope would probably yeah, be good that looked pretty dope yeah Donkey Kong's in it now oh that mm-hmm. would be cool I mean, they're still going That'd be cool uh, recently um, for Christmas Eli was given a. Uh, uh, Captain America. Oh, oh right, one of those yeah. figures, the, the like Captain the Lego figure, figure builds. Looks great, except the fingers. It's the fingers are terrible. Me out. Yeah, yeah, they're like way too big. 
proportionally. <laughs> it's got like giant claws. Uh, so what about you? Mine is unfortunately just off camera. Oh. For those. <laughs> but uh, up there, I got the Lego ideas set for the TARDIS from Doctor Who, which came out around the 50th anniversary. So it's got Doctors 12 and 13 in there. And you have the inside of the TARDIS uh-huh. around the controls and everything. Uh-huh. And then it like leads into the outside of the TARDIS, which you can remove, you know, a normal TARDIS. Okay. You, you see it up there? No. It's right there. Oh, okay. You see it? Yes. Yeah. So it's really, really beautiful. That's cool. Uh, and it was really fun to put together. I've had quite a few Lego sets. Um, not as many as an adult. But when I was a kid, I had a lot. And that was when they didn't have, um, like, licenses to things. It was just hmm. all their own creations. So we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second with some mm, additions to the answers that we got. Let's see what some of our friends said. All right. Tyranny says, uh, oh, my goodness, I have so many. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say my favorite is the 6,020-piece Hogwarts Castle. Yeah. It's a $470 set that I got for Christmas a few years ago, and it's my favorite because I grew up collecting Harry Potter Harry Potter Lego sets. I was a big fan before uh, there were even movies, so as I released merch and Lego sets, it was the first time I felt like my nerdy passion mattered to others, too. Uh, I wasn't the only person or kid obsessed over Harry Potter books, and the Lego sets gave me a way to be immersed in the world that I dreamt about being a part of, and now I have this massive, incredible Hogwarts set that, in a way, embodies my love for HP merch and Lego sets over the last 20 years. Uh, she said, also, yes, I still have every single Harry Potter Lego set I've ever received or purchased. My old ones are bagged up in a trunk in the, gar in the garage, and I have other newer sets alongside the castle. Wow. That Hogwarts set is ginormous. Yeah. It reminds me of the Simpsons Lego set that also came out that was ginormous. Do you remember that? Do you remember seeing that? Because that? that was also like yeah. several hundred dollars. And, it was, and you, it was like their whole house and garage and everything. And then it like it opened up and mm -hmm. had every single room and all kinds of stuff. Crazy. The closest we got to that, I think, was we bought that Big Bang Theory set do you remember okay. that one i remember that mm -hmm. uh, that has all been added to our boys legos over the years but we had it it was like their the apartment mm -hmm. but it had so many little details tiny little yeah it had the green lantern it had the little figurine it had the dna thing like it was really really neat the way they put it together bookshelves it's the first time i've ever built bookshelves in a lego set and the way they do it is really <laughs> cool um, I was impressed with that. Uh, Kevin said, I really find myself missing the old Blacktron sets that I had as a kid. I love those so much, especially as a Star Wars kid. They were so cool and bridged that gap with an original IP. Then they released the Star Wars sets finally in the late 90s, and I had quite a few of those original Star Wars set in my church office today. It's pretty cool. Cool. Uh... I don't think I ever had any of the Blacktron ones. I'm trying to think. I don't remember having those. Uh, Jared said, back in my day, the late 70s and 80s, they didn't have the IP branded sets, but they did have theme sets for Space City, which Lego City is still a pretty big mm -hmm. set uh, series today. Mm -hmm. I don't even really think of them as separate sets since the pieces were usually just all together in one big box under my bed, and I just build my own designs with them. Sometimes I'd tweak one for weeks until it was the perfect spaceship or whatever before tearing it down for pieces for my next creation. So this is what I connect with, with my childhood. Mm. When I was a kid, I had a lot of the space ones okay. uh particularly i don't remember like there were several different themes in within the space umbrella but i had one that was all like neon green themed there were like five sets neon green okay. like you know all the glass was green for okay. the spaceships and the ufos okay. or whatever mm -hmm. like there were different colors mm -hmm. um and so i had all the green ones one that was like this massive kind of 
lunar rover looking thing with these big tires, like six big tires. One was a legitimate like UFO spaceship kind of thing. It reminded me a lot of Star Trek at the time because I was vaguely interested in Star Trek when I was a kid. Um, and that was around the time First Contact came out and everything. Mm-hmm. And that was like my first big thing that I ever watched. Um, actually, I watched Generations first, but then I watched First Contact. <laughs> I was into it. Okay. I was into yeah. it. Yeah. And so I remember doing exactly that. I had all of them. They were all sets for a while. And then I just tore them all down. And they were all in one big bucket. And I would just build spaceships. Yeah. yeah. The coolest things. Yeah. That was really fun. I think the boys got, I think, like the Lego City police thing. Yeah. They've got a couple of Lego right? City things. They like made a helicopter and had cars and mm-hmm. building. Yeah. And it was really cool. Yeah. It came with stickers even to put on. Yeah, that's common. Yeah. That's been a thing um, even back then with those sets. The closest thing I have to the space sets now is over here. I have a Green Lantern spaceship, which you also can't see on camera, I don't think. Maybe you can. Is that right there? Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Green Lantern. <laughs> spaceship which i'm assuming is a spaceship he's creating with his ring but i'm not certain of that. <laughs> i don't know the lore of the set but i do know the comic books and he doesn't normally fly a spaceship right right <laughs> john says set four. he like has the numbers set 497 the okay. 80s galaxy explorer okay. it's the only true set i had as a kid the rest were buckets of lego i got as a christmas <laughs> for my birthday uh while i was always i will always love that set the two that tie for first place are 4998 which was the stegosaurus and 21311 which was voltron mm-hmm. both of these sets had such fun builds and part usage i kept bringing them to my wife saying look how cool this is <laughs> but if i had to pick voltron you build all five lions first and then they all transform and assemble into voltron wow, that's pretty cool just to be able to capture the ability in lego was an engineering marvel i'm hopeful for a similar experience when i build 10302 which is optimus prime as he transforms into his g1 form and i can't wait to build it that's so cool. these are all adults <laughs> these are all things he's done as an adult right yeah right that would be a yeah. stegosaurus. I'm I'm interested in the the stegosaurus looks good. He sent some pictures, uh, yeah. which you're seeing on the screen, but dangerous not. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, the Voltron though looks really cool. Voltron looks like you know it looks like where is Voltron? It, it looks like uh, <laughs> you know the Megazord up there. You know okay. it's it's the okay. five different parts and they each become a right. limb or whatever. Right. But it looks really good. That's cool. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, that's all of them. Oh, no, I skipped Lisa. I'm sorry. Lisa said, I have a deep nostalgia for some of the old pirate and castle sets from the late 80s and early 90s. I think I had one pirate set Yeah. when I was a kid. I wasn't super into pirates. I'm sure I got it from my grandma or something. Uh, Not any of the castle sets. I know they had a lot of castle sets back then. Yeah. Pirates, castles. I think they still do pirate stuff. Pirates was a big set. The boys recently got... A big series, right? A big, it was already put together. The pirate thing, my sister found it in Goodwill. It was like an already completed pirate ship made of Lego. And she was like, looks like it's missing some pieces. So I'm like, don't want to give it to him as a gift. But I found it and thought they could add it to their Lego. And they quickly dissembled it. <laughs> it was really cool. And I was like, you guys can add to it and make it I'm your own I'm not sure thing. I ever even like, got to see it. I'm going to take Yeah, they took it apart so fast. <laughs> so fast. Oh, my gosh. I went in and uh, it was gone. Was wow. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we got. Wow. I'll take us out. All right. What do you think of Lego Masters? What about Lego in general? What is your favorite set of all time? We want to know. Tell us at the socials at Nerd History LTN. So close. <laughs> Subscribe yeah. to the Nerd History Podcast via the Love Thy Nerd YouTube channel or on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. And find us on lovethynerd.com slash nerdhistorypod. And we also have our daily Today in Nerd History short and article that comes out every day at lovethynerd.com slash nerdhistory with photos and nerdy facts. Goodness oh, gracious. Oh, gosh, you scare me every time. Did you hear that? No. <laughs> was it? Yes, I did. 
We've just received a message from the nerd future. It looks like we've received an ad from the year 2025. That's pretty soon. A new Lego set is in the works. It's a Lego set of the Lego Masters set featuring Lego Masters building their sets on the set in the set. It's called the Lego Lego Masters set, Master set, Lego set. Here's what they look like. Oh, my gosh. Box. Oh, my gosh. the set right there. Well, that's real. It's beautiful, isn't it? Uh huh. Looks real good. That is going to be a thing. <laughs> that is absolutely going to be a thing. AI, AI can make some pretty cool, pretty cool mock ups here. Oh, crazy. <laughs> we will be back next week as we travel back in time to another event to celebrate in nerd history. Once again, I'm Radio Matt. And I'm Deidre. And remember in the past, present, and future, Jesus loves you, nerds. <laughs>